Hello my dear friends, uh, in the today's session we are going to discuss regarding the how to take out the monthly energy yield estimation report for a solar power plant in the PV watt calculator. Basically as we know the energy yield is nothing but what amount of kilowatt hour of units has been generated by the solar power plant that we called as an energy yield. Energy yield might be the day wise energy yield we can say like a solar power plant of 10 kilowatt is generating the 40 units per day and when we compare about the monthly basis so on an average of 1500 of units in terms of kilowatt hour it has been generated by the 10 kilowatt of a solar system simultaneously when we compare the whole yearly energy yield that time we can say it is an average energy yield that has been generated by the solar power system whenever we are going to installing any kind of a solar power plant that time actually it has been required to forecast the energy yield for the particular cases Whenever we are building any kind of the utility scale solar project also that time before installing or before investing the money inside the solar power project we have to estimate what amount of units has been generated by the solar power plant after installation and how much amount of profit we are getting from the installation of the solar power plant. There is a very very small technique that we call it as a PV watt calculator through that we can very very easy format we can take out the monthly energy yield estimation that is how many number of units has been generated by the solar power plant in this lecture so basically the website is pvwatts.nrel.gov so basically in this get started search box we have to type here the enter the particular site name let's say my site is been located in the mumbai region so i'm just writing here mumbai that is a whole district and most of the time we require the site location because to be found out the GHI value of a particular location according to the latitude of the location and the longitude of the location. So let's say my site has been located in the Mumbai district. So this I am writing here Mumbai and just click on the go over here. Once you are clicking on the go on this button then it will fetch the particular data of the particular district like the latitude wise data, longitude wise data and the map where which the particular site has been located. If you know the exact site name of where you are doing the or where you are installing the solar project, write the exact site name here also. So let's say for the Mumbai region, I am getting latitude of 18.95 and 72.85 is the longitude we are getting over here. So when we say the map actually over here, so automatically the PV watt generates the map also and the data it will taking from the NREL international database from which it is taking the GHI value of a data. So that is why the global horizontal irradiance which is falling over a site it is very much important when we are estimating or forecasting the energy that is been estimated from the particular solar power plant that is why we want the particular specific site location over here. Once we have written the particular site location, then we need to click on go to the system information over here. Once we have clicked over the go to the system information, here the simulation parameter we need to mention over here. So let's say the first parameter, what is the DC size for which we are designing for the case. Let's say the solar power system, we are installing ladder 10 kilowatt. So I'm sizing the particular DC side in terms of the kilowatt as the 10 kilowatt of DC side. The module type we have to choose over here. There are number of modules are available in the market like a poly module, like a mono modules are there, mono standard, mono perk module, bifacial module, half cut type of module, premium and the thin film type of a module. But generally for the utility scale solar projects and most of the modules which are available in the markets currently, they are the standard type of the module. So we are choosing this particular standard module because standard module is referring to the efficiency over here. It means that the solar panel efficiency for standard module is lying between the 15% to the 20% over here. Again, we need to select the array type. Rather, we can install the solar project in the rooftop area or we can install the solar project in the ground mount area. We have to select the particular array type over here. So basically in the database, we have given the fixed open rack fix roof mount, one axis tracking, dual axis tracking, likewise number of options are given for the mounting structure. So I am choosing over a fix roof mount type of a structure which is an array structure for the particular case. 
once we have written the dc system size in terms of kilowatt we have written the module type again the array type we have to choose what is the basic system losses are there over the particular site so to calculate the number of system losses in the percentage here is the loss calculator has been given over here just click on this loss calculator the number of losses which are possible over here that has been mentioned over here like a soiling losses what is the percentage of a soiling losses where we are installing the solar project if it is a rajasthan there is a soiling losses are more again when we are installing in the humid environment the soiling losses are lesser so likewise in the number of parameter we can choose the percentage of these losses over here so let's see the soiling losses which i am taking over here as a 3% shading losses which i am taking over here as 1% Shading means if any kind of a tree is shadow is falling over a solar panel, then what percentage it is falling over a solar panel? That losses we have to write over here. Again, the snow losses in India or typically in the Mumbai, there is no snow is falling actually. So we can take it as a zero as a snow losses. Then there is a mismatch losses. If our inverter is having only a single NPPT inverter we are choosing and we are having or we have attached the two number of the strings to the individual NPPT and if we are orienting the one number of the row in the south direction other number of a row in the southwest direction then there is a mismatch of the current it will be occur in the particular strings actually because ultimately we are connecting the two strings in the parallel combination so that is why whatever amount of current is coming from the two individual string that should be on an average same in the amount that is why we require the same orientation for the two string which is connected to the individual NPPT. So in that cases the mismatch losses concept might be came over here. So in this case we are taking mismatch losses as 1%. Wiring losses we can take it over here that is a DC cable internal resistance losses, AC cable internal resistance losses. So likewise the wiring losses we can take it over here. Let's say the 2% wiring losses I am taking over here. Again the connection losses. Connection means with the help of MC4 connector, we are connecting the particular wires. If we are not using the MC4 connector or if the, any kind of the mismatch is happening while we are doing the wiring connection, so that time we can take it at losses as 0.5%. If you take these losses as 0%, then it is also okay actually over here. Then there is a losses we call it as light induced degradation. Most of the times the optical losses which is falling basically. That means solar radiation is falling over a panel and it has been reflected from the panel most of the cases. So that time we can say the light induced degradation due to the optical losses. Again, the recombination losses of the electron hole pair which is getting generated under the depletion region. So that time most of the cases we are preferring to go for light induced degradation losses over here. And most of the cases we are taking these losses same that is 1.5% and we are assuming that there is optical losses or recombination losses are being occurred over this particular solar panel. So we have to take the LID losses as 1.5%. Then there is a nameplate rating. It means that if a manufacturer is giving us a solar panel of 325 watt peak but actually it is tested for 1000 watt per meter square and 25 degree standard test temperature over here but basically when we put this solar panel in the outside environment there is a temperature is somewhat higher again there is a wind speed is also there again the solar radiation which is falling actually the percentage of radiation falling is also changing day by day and the hour by hour in the particular day so that is why whatever amount of nameplate rating watt peak has been given by the manufacturer in actual cases we are getting somewhat lesser amount of that actually. So in that cases the nameplate rating losses we can take it up to 2% to the 5% in the particular range over here. So here in this particular case study I am taking here as 2%. Then there is a age factor. Age factor is nothing but as our solar panel in the first year degrades at a percentage of 2.5%. Again from the second year to the 10 year it degrades as a percentage of 0.68%. Again from 11th year up to 25th year it degrades in the percentage of 0.69% likewise. 
So basically when we see the graph that is 100% solar generation in the first year degrades up to the 80% solar generation. So at the end of the 25th year of the solar panel we were getting only the 80% of the output from the solar panel actually and that is why it is called as the percentage or the age losses of the solar panel. So we can take it here as approximately 1% as a age losses and again there is an availability losses. Availability losses are nothing but if due to any kind of a maintenance, due to any kind of natural calamity, if our solar power plant is getting shut down in the particular cases, then there is the decrease of the energy yield is happening for the particular day. So let's say there is a wiring fault has been occurred. So we have to shut down the solar power plant and we have to do the maintenance over here. So that is why the availability of uh, electricity in the particular day is zero. That is why we call it as the availability losses over here. So we can take these losses from 1% to the 3% at most we can change over here. So in this case, I'm taking these availability losses as 3% and assuming that there is a frequent maintenance has been happening. And that is why in the particular day, we are not getting any kind of the electricity from the solar panel over here. So likewise, according to the site to site and the criteria to criteria, the system losses are varying over here. So approximately by this calculation, we calculated these losses up to 14.07%. Once we have been estimated these losses, then this save this button, click on this particular save button and save this particular losses over here. Then there is a called as tilt angle. Tilt angle means which angle we are orienting our solar panel that is called as the tilt angle. So I am taking here 18, 18 degree over here because the latitude of the Mumbai district is up to the 18.69 degree north. So that is why when we are going for the fixed tilt angle method for placement of a solar panel, we are taking tilt angle is as good as the latitude of the particular site. Then we are orienting the solar panel in the true south direction. So that is why we are taking the azimuth angle over here as 180 degree azimuth. Once we have written this particular basic system information, we need to proceed for the advanced parameter. In advanced parameter, we have to write DC to AC size ratio over here. DC to AC size ratio is nothing but let's say the 10 kilowatt of a DC side solar panel I am connecting and after the inverter I am getting there is only the 8 kilowatt or 9.5 kilowatt I am getting then what is the difference between that is called as the DC to AC size ratio. The ultimate ideal value of the DC to AC size ratio is ranging from 1.1 to 1.25 and on an average for the calculation we were taking as 1.2 over here. Again, the third parameter is the inverter efficiency. Whichever inverter you are choosing, just see the specification data sheet and check out what is the basic efficiency has been given by the manufacturer. And ground coverage ratio. Ground coverage ratio is nothing but what is the area of a solar panel that we are choosing and what is the area of the rooftop is been available over here. Basically, here we are placing the solar panel keeping in mind that there should be a proper inter row spacing has been provided so that shadow of the second row should not be fall over the particular first row over here. So the on an average ground coverage area that is area of a panel divided by the whichever area has been available in the interior zone its value is lying between 0.3 to 0.6 actually in the ideal cases. So on an average we can take it here as 0.4 as a ground coverage ratio. Once we have done with this advanced parameter, then we have to proceed for the electricity rate over here. If we are installing the solar pa panel in the residential sector that is for the houses or the commercial sector out of which we have to select over here. Again, at which rate the particular tariff rate the utility is giving us the electricity that we have to mention over here. So let's say for the 10 kilowatt of a project, if I am going to be installing in the residential sector, the tariff rate is 9.75 rupees per kilowatt hour. We just convert these rupees into the dollar term which comes as 0 0.1369 dollar per kilowatt hour which is a current tariff rate per kilowatt hour for the residential sector. So once we have written this tariff rate over here then we have completed the basic simulation parameter which are required to generate the report over here. Once we have done with this particular simulation parameter, we have to click on 
go to the PV bot result button which has been given over here. Once we are clicking on go to the PV bot result button, it will just display us whatever amount of the AC energy that we are producing in the month wise basis. That is the on an average energy yield what will be there for the 10 kilowatt of a solar project it will estimate it over here basically in the first column they are giving the january up to the december month that is the 12 month again for the second column there is a solar radiation in terms of kilowatt hour per meter square per day this radiation parameter varies as we are changing side to side that we are entering in the initial stage while entering in the pv watt calculator and the third column we are getting what amount of units has been generated in the particular january month in the february month march month april month likewise and what is the average energy has been generated yearly basis which is 15339 kilowatt hour per year and what is the electricity bill or how much amount of saving we have doing after creating this much amount of the electricity from the 10 kilowatt of the solar project so in the January month, it will come $190. Again, in the February month, it comes $185. So likewise, we are saving up to $2,101 when we compare the tariff rate of the utility grid and whatever amount of electricity that we were generating by using the solar over here. Once we have done this particular report, again on the lower side, there is a location information has been given. Whatever the simulation parameter that we have used, same parameter they have been mentioned over here actually. Once we have done with this particular report, then there we have to click on this print result tab. As good as we are clicking on this print result tab, in the format of the PDF format, we can save this particular PDF and we can show to the client also where we want to install the particular solar power project over here. I just show you the PDF format, how the PDF uh, report has been created by the PV Watt calculator. So in this format, it comes with this table. Here it shows how much amount of energy yield has been generated per year basis and per month basis. And simultaneously, whatever the simulation parameter that we are using and what is the basic capacity factor as per the calculation is 17.7 percentage. So likewise, this report has been generated and we can easily came to know that this much amount of 10 kilowatt of a system will generate how much amount of electricity at the end of the year actually. Thank you for watching the video. Fine.